In order to understand any food preservation method, we need to understand what is food preservation, food processing, unit process, and unit operations. In this video, I'm going to explain each of these aspects with selected examples. What are we going to learn? First, we need to understand what is food preservation. It is an action or way to maintain foods at desired properties for a desired period. Second, what is processing? Generally, a process is defined as the sequence of events and equipment systems required in producing a product. In the case of processed foods, steps are taken to improve quality in terms of safety, nutrition, desired sensitive characteristics and convenience as well as shelf life. Third, what is unit process? Unit process is the complete process containing all steps or all unit operations to process a food product from its raw materials or original state. Fourth, what is unit operation? Unit operation considers the analysis of each step in the unit process. I am now going to explain more details of the preservation first. Food preservation or processing involves the actions taken to maintain foods with desired properties or nature for a desired time frame. We need to understand three aspects, actions, desired properties or characteristics, and desired time frame. First consider cutting and dicing. The action is the size reduction by cutting and dicing and purpose is easy to consume, that is biting and chewing. Second one is the cooking. The actions are heating and mixing. The purpose is the killing of bacteria, easy of consumption, flavor and texture development, and easy of digestion. When we want to preserve a food, two questions we need to ask. First, what are the target attributes need to be achieved in relation to microbial, chemical, biochemical, and physical attributes? Second, what is the time frame or period of preservation or stability? Quality in this regard, we need to target microbial and chemical safety first and then sensory and nutritional quality. Desired shelf life or time frame depends on different scenario. We could understand the desired attributes of foods by a few examples. Let's consider breakfast cereals and instant noodles. In the case of breakfast cereals, we need to have long bowl life with crunchy sound, that is milk should not be soaked quickly. In this case, products should have crushed with limited open pores. However, in the case of instant noodles, it should be softened quickly that is diced vegetable should be soaked by water quickly and therefore we need to have much more open pores with no crust. In this case, desired porosity depends on the types of products. Another example, in the case of apple juice, consumers expect it to be clear, whereas orange juice can be cloudy. In this case, 
clarity of juices depends on the type of fruit juices. In the case of preservation and safety, for example red meat heating, we need to kill pathogenic and spoilage bacteria. Whereas in the case of yogurt, we want to preserve beneficial lactic acid bacteria. In this case, preserving bacteria is necessary. Length of time, that is shelf life, is one of the most important factors to be considered when preserving a food product. At the end of shelf life, a food product becomes unsuitable for consumption. I could provide one example to understand the time frame of food preservation. We can consider a fresh sandwich and fruit juice. In the case of a fresh sandwich, we generally need to target one day or half day shelf life and it should be stored in a chill conditions. In this case, there is no point in ensuring preservation for weeks or months. In the case of fruit juice, we need to apply the preservation method based on the required shelf life. For example, if we need a couple of weeks to preserve, then we could apply pasteurization. And it needs to be stored at chill condition. Whereas, if we need very long shelf life of six months to one year or more, we need to use UST or sterilization method. In some instances, we need to preserve foods for a very long time, even up to three to five years or even a year. For example, foods for space travelers, food storage during wars, and when crops are damaged over multiple seasons. In order to understand processing, unit process, and unit operation, it would be good to discuss the flow diagram first. Flow diagram is to visualize the complete process or steps very clearly. We could discuss the flow diagram by considering the bread making process. Bread making process could include seven steps that is mixing, kneading, bulk fermentation, molding or shaping, proofing, baking, cooling and packaging. It is common to draw a box of each step of processing and include the name of the step inside. In some instances, critical or important conditions of the steps could be included. In many cases, schematic symbols could be used for each step. Now let's go back to the process. Process is the sequence of steps as we have identified seven steps. Unit process includes the analysis of all steps for scaling of the ingredients to the final bread. Unit operation considers the analysis of each step in the unit process, for example, kneading. Overall, preservation and processing add value to a product. Another aspect we need to understand how preservation and processing severity is related to the food quality in relation to safety, sensory and nutrition. Quality is usually defined as the degree of excellence to the users, that is consumers. In order to understand the quality aspect of foods, you should watch my earlier video on the properties of foods, measurement method, prediction and applications. Food quality, that is safety, nutrition and sensory, is interrelated with the processing severity. I am providing one example, cooking of a chicken. In this graph, we can see that safety is increased as processing severity is increased, that is increased time temperature. The nutrition contents 
decrease as processing severity is increased. While sensory at the early cooking is similar to raw and later stage it is overcooked. Therefore, in many instances processing severity needs to be optimized based on many quality parameters. I have provided here a very simple example just to understand. In reality, it is a complicated problem to be solved. In this video, we have tried to understand food preservation, food processing, unit process and unit operations with selected example. Preservation is an action to maintain food at desired properties for a desired time frame. Processing is the sequential steps while unit operations is the complete steps from raw to final product. And unit operations is the analysis of a step in the process or unit process. In addition, we attempted to understand food quality and processing severity in relation to safety, nutrition and sensory. Processing severity enhances the safety while processing severity could enhance or decrease the sensory or nutrition in a complex manner. Thank you for watching this video.